It actually worked this time. Huh. I guess there's a limitation to the range. Not sure that. Now, if you want to talk about radio waves and the signal, there we are, you know. Sneakers tree, so to speak. And, uh, I've been thinking a lot you know, with, you talk, with like, talking to this phone, which is the reality of it, and the very few people that actually watch what I'm talking about. Because who gives a crap about some guy that's well dressed talking about whatever opinions he has? Like, why should I listen to some talking head? You know? Why should I do anything at all? And the way I go about this is that, well, you know, identity, the principles of identity, as I've talked about before, you know, core principles, are surrounded by layers and layers of, ex of life experience that define the very tree from root to fruit, right? It takes a long time a very long time for something to take root and then grow and to bear fruit. Yeah. This is the cycle of life. And some of us take longer to do that than others. Because there's there's more nutrients to be pulled up from from the ground. From from our roots, from our heritage. And not all of us have the opportunity uh, to look back into our own personal histories and our lineages. To see where that lies and there's been this effort uh, I'm gonna call it uh, corporate communism okay so this uh, democratization of opinion is another way to put it uh, in that you know the court of public opinion through the internet becomes the narrative and so then a collective of different people repeating the same message over and over and over again as it was uh, you know say with the 24-hour news cycle because you need content, right? You need content in order for people to be attracted to your core principles, right? Whatever you're trying to communicate, and whatever you try to, whatever uh, you know, uh, group preference and group ideology you're trying to establish. Yeah, that's right. You gotta love this dog, eh? Yeah. So to start, you know, with uh, my own example, because my history is that of Canada, and I thought I sought out uh, in my own life to try and, uh, you know, see the see the country for what it is. And a lot of people don't have that opportunity, but I've had that opportunity thanks to being an aircraft mechanic and chasing airplanes from coast to coast. Now I haven't been to the territories yet, and I will do that. I want to do that, but I've also been to Greenland. You know, and how many people do you know? I know no one, no one else besides myself, that's been to Greenland. And I'll tell you why I went there. It was for, it was for an expedition to get some Second World War aircraft out from underneath the ice, and it was a real adventure. And I did it with basically nothing. I okay, got very little support. You know, um, the expedition leader was very kind to give me a plane ticket and, and uh, you know, to arrange things. Because you, you imagine how expensive it is to do something like that, you know, and in, in, in how, how much effort it takes and how much passion and dedication it is to, to honor those who come before you uh, with something like that. Because, you know, aircraft, especially from the Second World War, are very rare and they take a lot of effort to, uh, to maintain and to restore because all the knowledge is lost you know through time and when the knowledge is lost through time then the techniques you know the tribal knowledge and uh, you know the experience of each of those individuals that worked on them and whatever whatever you know little tricks of the trade that they have or had disappears bye bye right and it's three generations from wealth to ruin and it's not just you know, wealth of knowledge, but you know, individual wealth uh, of assets and liquid and you know li liabilities, whatever the financial terminology. I don't give a give a hoot right now. 
Um, you know, I'm just standing here at the low weight there's sign with some sunglasses on, looking like a code eight cocaine addict. You know, like fuck it. <laughs> you know, why should I listen to this guy? Uh, I don't know. Draw your own opinion. That's the whole point, right? Is that there's been a lot of things done in in, in the recent culture, the last twenty to twenty five years, if not if not more than that. I'm going to correlate to other things I've said before, having to do with the drugs and with the intoxication of, of a utopia, you know, uh, a socialist utopia. Everyone wants to say or think that uh, Canada is, you know, a, a socialist utopia or that we're, you know, the, the peacekeepers of the world. But this is very old information. Right? There's a lot of people out there and around here that are sick and tired of doing other people's dirty work and being subjected to such such exploitation of the mind, the heart, and the gut, right? And you know everything in line as uh, you know if you're going to go by the chakras and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know the energy center, centers uh, from from the center of the brain down to the root of the ass. And when when there's blockages in in, in those, uh, then you got issues, right? You're not speaking your mind through the throat. You know it's all all up here. You know, you got something stuck in your heart. You know, you're not quite saying it. You're not communicating it. You're not speaking in front of the speaker's tree. Okay, you're not getting it out there. It's nothing's happening, and when nothing's happening, nothing changes. And then the people that stand up, you know, as <laughs> come on, Zoe. You okay? Come on.